In this video, I'm going to share with you how I closed my first land deal and got paid. Now, the closing process has a lot of different moving parts, and if one of those parts breaks down, it could potentially delay the closing and your payday by weeks sometimes. So this is how I helped to make sure that the closing went smoothly and ensured that my payday wasn't delayed. Hopefully you get a lot of value out of this video. If you stay to the end, I hope that you'll come away with some tips on how you can make sure that your next closing is smooth sailing to payday. The first tip is find an investor friendly title company. So I first asked around my network of investor friends what title companies they use, what title companies they would recommend. I also did some research and asked around in different Facebook groups for investors on which title companies were investor friendly. And so once I got a short list of those title companies, I actually called to verify to make sure that those title companies were familiar with wholesale deals and assignments of contract. And so once I found out that they were, and I verified and confirmed that they were, I made sure that those were the title companies that I went to because they would know exactly how to structure the deal and how the closings need to work for these types of deals. So the next tip is connect with the escrow officer who's handling your file. Once the file is open at the title company, there will be a main point person, an escrow officer, who's responsible for working on your file and closing it out. And so I always like to connect with the escrow officer, start building rapport. I'll give a phone call and just chat with them, figure out who they are, introduce them to myself and start building that goodwill. Typically title companies have dozens of transactions that they close a month. So if that escrow officer has a face and has a relationship that's connected with that file, they're a lot more likely and a lot more willing to sort of do favors and move things along a lot faster for you. And so I've always found that if I treat everyone that I work with, especially my escrow officer, super well, that things just tend to move a lot more smoothly and a lot faster. The next tip is ask the title company for a checklist of everything that you need to close. And so this just kind of helps make sure that everyone is on the same page. When I talk to the escrow officer, I'll ask, hey, can you send me a list of everything that you need to make sure that this file is closed out? And as we go through the closing process and as things are filled in and filed, those things will start getting checked off this list. That way I know, the escrow officer knows, the buyer knows, the seller knows, everyone knows where we are in the process because we're all working off of that checklist. So that's one of the main things that I'll do after building rapport is I'll say, okay, can you send me that checklist of everything that you need so I can start working on it and help you with it? So the next tip is check in regularly with the title company. So the title company's main business model is to sell title insurance on real estate transactions. So it's really not to make sure that the closing happens smoothly. So if I want to make sure that my closings happen smoothly, then I have to make sure that I am moving them along and I'm acting as my own transaction coordinator. So I will reach out to title just about every other day and find out, is there anything that you need from the seller? Is there anything that you need from the buyer? Is there anything that you need at all? How can I help? Where are we on the checklist? But constant communication with that escrow officer at the title company will really help to make sure that your file is moving along and is where it's supposed to be. In addition to that, I always like to make sure that I try to get a close date on the calendar as soon as possible. That way everyone knows what date we're shooting for. So just because the assignment of contract says we're gonna close on October 18th, maybe we can actually close a little bit sooner. So maybe October 12th. So once we get a date on the calendar, then we can really start doing some project management and making sure that everything is moving smoothly towards that date. So the next tip is keep your cool and expect issues. Oftentimes when property moves from one owner to another owner, there could be paperwork that was misfiled or filled out incorrectly. And so the closing process is about catching all of those issues to make sure that they're ironed out legally. So closing can also mean, in my mind, ironing out problems. So I expect problems that way when they creep up, it's not like a major surprise and I can just deal with them calmly and coolly and make sure that they're handled as quickly as possible. So the next tip is ask for a preliminary closing statement. I always like to ask for a preliminary closing statement or a HUD statement as soon as possible. Even if all of the checklist of the closing hasn't necessarily been completed, I like to see a preliminary statement that shows the assignment price, the sales price, the purchase price. That way I can verify that all of those numbers are correct. A closing statement is going to show where every single cent goes in a transaction. And so 
Oftentimes I find if I wait until one or two days before closing to get that closing statement, if I find errors, that can start pushing the closing back. And so I like to try to get that as soon as possible. That way I can make sure I catch any errors early and it doesn't delay the closing date. The next tip is mobile notaries are awesome. So a mobile notary is a notary that will actually go out to any party to make sure that they are present and that they can sign the paperwork without having that person go into the title company to physically sign the papers. So I will often schedule a mobile notary to go out to the buyer or to go out to the seller. That way the buyer or seller doesn't have to go into the title company and it just makes it so much more convenient and it keeps the schedules really clean and clear. So you don't have to deal with issues like, oh, I can't get off of work or, oh, I can't um, make that long trip on this day and it starts pushing back the closing. So mobile notaries can go to someone's office on their lunch break or go to their job whenever they need them to. They don't have to necessarily go into the office. So mobile notaries are a huge thing. I always make sure that we have mobile notaries on board to be able to sign the documents and keep the schedule moving. The next tip is communicate, communicate, communicate. This is huge in the closing process. I always like to make sure that I'm communicating with the buyer and the seller at least once a week to let them know where we are in the closing process. I've had experiences before where if I just left it in the title company's hands that they didn't really reach out to anyone until there was an issue and then I get a panicked phone call from the seller saying, hey, are we still doing this deal? And so I just like to make sure that I'm in contact with everyone at least once a week. And then when I'm talking to the title company every other day, I'm finding out, do you need anything? Is there a file that you need? Is there a document that you need? Sometimes they may need something like a marriage certificate from the seller. And so if they let me know that, as soon as I find out, I can contact the seller and say, hey, can I get a marriage certificate? That way I can get that over to title. Or if they don't feel comfortable sending that to me, then I just let them know, hey, title needs for you to send a marriage certificate to them. Anything that I can do to make sure that all wheels are moving smoothly and I'm sort of uh, oiling up each of those wheels so nothing slows down and breaks down, that helps this closing process go by so much faster. The next tip is get wiring instructions into your title company. I like to make sure that the title company has my most current wiring instructions. That way I don't have to go into the title company on the day of closing to sign anything. I don't have to pick up a check. I don't have to do anything other than sit back and wait for that wire to digitally hit my bank account. And so this can really make sure that your payday is a lot faster than if you have to go and physically pick up a check or even have them mail a check to you waiting for that check to come in, getting the check to clear at the bank. If you get a wire, it's instantaneous. As soon as those funds are uh, dispersed from the title company, the money is in your bank account. So that's a major uh, tip that I have is that I love to make sure that I always have the most current wiring instructions into my title company. As great as it is to get paid from a closing, it's even better to get paid from two or more closings in the same week. So once I started to do two or three deals at a time, I started to get pretty overwhelmed from all the different moving parts and all of the different phases that each deal was adding to the table. So in my next video, I'll share with you how I created a few easy to follow systems that made doing two or three deals at a time super simple. If you're interested in hearing from other six and seven figure land flippers about how they have built and run their businesses, then check out my Facebook group, Only Land Fans, where I do live interviews each week. You can grab that link in the description below. And until then, be great, have an awesome week, and catch you in the next one.